Welcome everybody to Adaptation Concepts, an overview of the tools and resources that are part of the Climate Change Response Framework and Adaptation Workbook. The Northern Institute of Applied Climate Science, also referred to as NIACS, spans the boundary between academic research and the practical information and support that land managers need for decision making. The Forest Service provides primary support, but all of these organizations provide partnership, support, and perspective. NIACS is one of the largest adaptation-focused groups in the country, with 20 people, half of whom engage in direct technical assistance to stakeholders. We also have an in-house vegetation impacts modeling team and a growing staff emphasizing carbon management. We provide practical information, adaptation resources, and technical assistance for climate impacts modeling, vulnerability assessment, climate adaptation, carbon science and management, and science translation and professional training. Through these activities, we support natural resource professionals in addressing climate and carbon issues in their management planning. Our team also pursues new scientific research and scientific synthesis related to carbon biogeochemistry, climate impacts, and tree species responses. We want to recognize that forest managers face a number of different threats and have always had to plan for unexpected events such as pest outbreaks, drought, and flooding. Climate change is just one more thing a forest manager needs to keep in mind as they're thinking about how to meet their management goals and objectives. There are two main ways that we can think about responding to climate change. One is mitigation and the other is adaptation. Mitigation involves taking action to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and enhance carbon sinks. So that can include things like forest carbon sequestration. Keep in mind that mitigation works on a much longer time frame than adaptation due to the slow changing nature of the global carbon cycle. In today's presentation, we'll be focusing on adaptation, which refers to actions that we can take to reduce the vulnerability of systems to climate change effects. So these are things that we can do in response to observed or anticipated climate change impacts. The concept of adaptation involves the adjustment of systems in preparation or in response to climate change. From a forest manager's perspective, adaptation actions are, de are designed to specifically address climate change impacts and vulnerabilities in order to continue meeting goals and objectives. So adaptation is not necessarily anything new or different. In fact, many adaptation actions are consistent with sustainable management and efforts to restore ecosystem function. A change in climate may compel some managers to adopt new practices, but it can also underscore the importance of sustainable practices that are already being used and can help build upon current management actions that work to sustain, conserve, and restore ecosystems over the long term. Ultimately, the actions we take in light of climate change impacts are anchored in our own values and willingness to accept risk. There is no single right way to pursue climate adaptation. In a typical forest management scenario, we generally identify our objectives, determine a desired future condition for the site, and then develop and implement prescriptions to achieve that desired condition. With a reasonable understanding of vegetation dynamics, we can generally predict the impact of disturbances on vegetation patterns. But a changing climate introduces additional uncertainty. The ways in which climate change will impact forest ecosystems is not fully understood. Due to this uncertainty, we need to ask ourselves, what actions can be taken to enhance the ability of a system to cope with change and to continue meeting our goals and objectives. Options for adaptation exist on a spectrum from resistance to resilience to transition. A resistance approach involves managing a system to persist in its current state. On the other end of the spectrum is transition, which involves intentionally facilitating change. 
These adaptation options are big, lofty, and a bit abstract, but they will guide our thinking when we begin looking at more specific adaptation strategies and approaches later in the planning process. Our overarching goal is to identify and implement actions that are robust across a range of potential future conditions. The first option on the continuum on the persistence end is the concept of resistance. The idea here is to protect a system from anticipated changes and disturbances so that it may remain in a relatively unchanged condition. This is a good option for systems that may be economically, socially, or culturally valuable or need to be protected for specific values or characteristics. This is also an important option for areas such as wetlands that may contain threatened or endangered species and have mandates that require their protection. Some resistance actions that we might consider include preparing infrastructure to deal with flooding, so that could be building seawalls or enlarging culverts. We could also consider installing fuel breaks to prevent the spread of catastrophic wildfire, or perhaps on your site, you're more concerned with things like preventing the spread of invasive species, pests, and diseases. So these actions are really anything that we can do to protect particularly valuable ecosystems and those that may not be able to cope with disturbances and pressures from a changing climate. However, it's best to think of resistance as a good strategy for the near term, mid to late century, rather than over the longer term, as it is likely that supporting persistence of the existing ecosystem will require greater resources, effort, and cost as the climate shifts further from historical norms. With this option, you're also accepting more risk over time. The resilience option is in the middle of the spectrum. It allows for some degree of change or disruption in the system while still being able to bounce back to a similar condition after a disturbance. The goal here is to improve the overall health and vigor of the ecosystem to better prepare the site for climate change impacts and stressors. Resilience actions may include things like conducting prescribed burns to regenerate fire-adapted species, performing thinning in overstocked sands, or increasing setbacks to accommodate fluctuating water levels. In this option, we allow disturbances to occur, but we want the system to eventually return to its original condition, or at least resemble current conditions. Lots of sustainable forest management already falls under this umbrella, but this option still incurs risk over time, especially if climate change trends are heading in a different direction. The final option on this spectrum is transition. With a transition approach, we are intentionally encouraging change to help ecosystems respond in a targeted fashion. Transition actions might include favoring native species that are expected to be adapted to future conditions, relocating existing infrastructure to areas with less risk, and restoring river and riparian areas to accommodate new and altered hydrologic processes. The transition option involves making intentional, directed changes which may require more effort up front. But the end result is a forest that still provides values and services that are important to you. We're not going to go into a lot of detail outlining these adaptation options. Just know that these are useful concepts to keep in mind as you begin the planning process. Try to think about strategies and approaches that reduce impacts and maintain current conditions, as well as other approaches that are forward looking where you are intentionally facilitating change in your local project. As you begin to think about adaptation planning, you'll start considering questions like when and where. The where is very important because where you start out is going to be different from where your neighbor starts out. Soils, elevation, exposure, threats and stressors, and numerous other site-specific factors must be taken into account. You'll also need to consider what your goals are and what you're trying to achieve on the site you're managing. For example, you might have a specific goal about wildlife habitat while your neighbor is more concerned with timber production. 
So if you're looking for a single answer to how to respond to climate change, it will always be, it depends, because it depends on where you're working and what you're trying to achieve. In response to the need for adaptation planning tools, NIAX has created the Adaptation Workbook as a resource to help managers integrate climate considerations into management decisions. The framework is an adaptive management process and a decision support tool in the form of a workbook and related adaptation resources. The workbook was designed to be flexible enough to accommodate diverse goals and land ownerships, but most typically the workbook is used at a project level and centers on the manager's expertise and judgment and can help managers clarify and articulate how they're intentionally considering climate change adaptation in their management plans. The workbook really helps to translate broad scale and conceptual information into tangible on the ground actions. As a rule, the workbook does not make recommendations, but instead creates a platform for managers to take credit for the good work already being done and creates an opportunity for managers to recognize new approaches to dealing with climate related threats and vulnerabilities. The Adaptation Workbook provides a framework that steps you through a logical process and helps to articulate and account for potential climate change risks and adaptation responses and promotes monitoring to determine the overall effectiveness of these actions. The whole process is meant to provide a clear, transparent plan that connects the dots between climate vulnerability and intentional climate adaptation responses. The first step in this process is to consider your management objectives. What goals are you trying to achieve? In the second step, we bring in resources, such as vulnerability assessments, scientific literature, and other resources to help assess the climate impacts and vulnerabilities that are relevant in your location. So for you, perhaps that will be more intense precipitation or shorter, warmer winters. This step will really help you discover the climate impacts that are likely to affect your region. For step three, we consider how our objectives from step one will be impacted by the climate impacts identified in step two. What do these impacts mean for achieving your goals? How is your site most vulnerable? What challenges or opportunities might emerge that will make reaching your goals easier or harder? In the fourth step, we begin to think about adaptation approaches and tactics that might be implemented to ensure the success of your objectives or otherwise reduce the risk of failure in spite of climate change challenges. NIAX has developed a number of menus of adaptation strategies and approaches which can be helpful when brainstorming the specific adaptation tactics that may work for your particular site. Finally, in step five, we think about how best to monitor the effectiveness of those selected actions. So we call this the adaptation workbook because it's actually a workbook people can complete pen to paper on worksheets, which you'll find at the URL listed at the bottom of the screen. There is also an interactive online version that you can find at adaptationworkbook.org. As I mentioned earlier, in the fourth step of the workbook, we introduce a series of menus of adaptation strategies and approaches. These menus provide a curated list of possible adaptation actions to help you move from broad ideas to specific actions. Although menu items can be applied in various combinations to achieve desired outcomes, not all items on the menu will work together. Actions that work well in one ecosystem type may not work in another. It's up to the land manager to select appropriate actions according to project location and goals. The adaptation menus are designed to help land managers work from broad concepts such as the ideas of resistance, resilience, and transition that we mentioned earlier to really specific on the ground actions and tactics. Planning for and adapting to climate change is not a one size fits all approach. There are an infinite number of possibilities that land managers might consider, but the menus serve as great resources to help brainstorm potential actions that might work for your site. But in the end, it's the land manager who designs and selects the adaptation tactics that will be best suited for their particular site and goals. Following this planning process can help create clarity by linking the why to the how 
It also sets the context for your goals and actions in response to climate change. For example, you might have the goal of facilitating species migration, and your strategy for doing that might be to promote landscape connectivity, which is a fairly broad concept and something we would consider an adaptation strategy. To make that more specific, you might decide to achieve that goal by reducing landscape fragmentation. That's more specific, but still doesn't tell you the exact action to take. To make things even more specific, we go to the tactic level. So for example, you might decide to establish new partnerships to help coordinate the acquisition of forest lands to achieve common management goals. Over the years, this resource and toolkit has grown as we have collaborated with partners to expand the menus beyond forests to include a variety of perspectives relevant to other land management topics, such as agriculture, forested watersheds, urban forestry, and tribal perspectives. You can find these menus on our website. We're also working on new menus for wildlife, coastal habitats, and grasslands. Each adaptation resource is a culmination of extensive review of the literature as well as synthesis of the great ideas and experiences provided by land managers and scientists. For a user-friendly compendium of the adaptation strategies, approaches, and tactics from all of the available menus, check out the Climate Change Resource Center website. So to recap, there is not any one-size-fits-all model to prepare ecosystems for climate change. There are many paths forward that exist on a spectrum from persistence to actively managing for change. Although an approach that facilitates change may feel uncomfortable, it can be an ideal strategy in certain situations, such as facilitating a different forest community based on long-term hydrologic concerns. There is no right or wrong way to adapt to climate change, and managers may find themselves taking both persistence and change-oriented approaches in a given project. The ultimate goal of the adaptation menus and workbook is to connect the dots. We've talked a lot about management goals and objectives because that's a critical starting piece to understand where you are and what you're trying to do. We can then assess the climate change impacts on those goals and objectives and consider what sorts of challenges and opportunities exist. Based on that information, we are then able to select some options, strategies, and approaches that will hopefully make it easier to take advantage of opportunities and overcome challenges. The menus help us make our ideas more specific while connecting climate vulnerabilities and risks to our on the ground responses. This process helps us to intentionally define our path forward. Thank you for your attention. If you'd like to take a closer look at the tools and resources discussed in this presentation, check out our website or feel free to contact us with any questions that you may have.